Yeah, the fallout, the controversial remarks by Jean-Marie Le Pen, the founder of France's National Front. It's kind of dominating, isn't it, Will? That's right. Aujourd'hui in France says his daughter is now having to reconsider uh, her, her perspective on on the man who founded the party and Jean Marine's uh, Marie's word have words of course have caused an outcry and Marine condemned them as a political error. Now, historically speaking, many have accused the National Front of being anti-Semitic, and the paper says that the remarks undermine the party's strategy to, over time, try to improve its image here in France. And it's actually the first time, isn't it, that Marine has uh, distanced herself uh, from uh, the party. And, of course, as we said at the top there, he's the founder of it as well, isn't it? That's right. So Le Figaro looks at why uh, the leader of the National Front, Marine, is no longer making excuses for him anymore. It says that Marine finds herself once again in the familiar position of trying to put out fire in regards to anti-Semitism and racism. And today's National Front will likely play a key role in the 2017 presidential election presidential elections, we've seen them trying to rally support among groups that don't usually vote for them, such as students or teachers and ecologists. But now the National Front in the run-up to that election is trying to please the greatest number of people it can, and it can no longer afford a missed up, even if it comes from the party's founder. And it's not just Marine, is it? Others uh, within the party also being very critical. That's right. The number two in the party, Louis Alliot, has said that if there's anyone in the party's camp that thinks like Jean-Marie, then they're fools. Now, Slate also looks at uh, the, the, the members, of the supporters of the National Front, but it's a very harsh take. Um, some would say a very appropriate take as well. It compares the supporters of the National Front to those of Philippe Pétain. This was France's Vichy leader in World War II who supported anti-Semitic laws. And it says that they themselves, the supporters of the National Front, are not Pétainistes, but they support a party that is from xenophobia to sexism to racism, and it calls on the greater public within France. It puts the onus on the public to tell the supporters of the National Front exactly what it is they're endorsing. I'm also making uh, the front pages here in France the threat of Islamization uh, in prisons. It's a tricky word and it's a tricky thing it to is. manage here in France. <laughs> this comes after the shooting at the Jewish Museum in Brussels. Now, French police arrested suspect Mehdi Namouche, who is believed to have been radicalized during his stint in prison. And Le Figaro says there are some 150 radicals that, quote, seek to fan fanaticize the French prison population. An editorial inside the paper says this is a ticking time bomb and says that, in fact, about half of France's uh, prison population is Muslim. But the prisons lack the man manpower to appropriately monitor uh, the, the populations, but also the, the manpower to provide support. It says in all of France there are only 167 Muslim chaplains. That's more than five times fewer than the Christian counterparts. Now, Will's also uh, pulled out an international story. This is the Catholic newspaper La Croix looking at uh, the Pope's call for peace in the Middle East. That's right. La Croix returns to this prayer meeting held Sunday at the Vatican. Uh, Pope Francis invited Israeli President Shimon Peres and his, his Palestinian counterpart Mahmoud Abbas. And La Croix says this was a historic and unprecedented gesture that we shouldn't get our hopes up about its effectiveness to bring peace. Nonetheless, it could be effective in continuing the dialogue, and that's what this is all about. Plus, uh, the paper's also looking at another hope for dialogue. This is uh, between Ukraine and Russia, isn't it? That's right. Now, Le Figaro says there's a hope of dialogue being resuscitated after Russia recognized Ukraine's newly sworn-in president, Petro Poroshenko. But the tensions remain high. Poroshenko's offered concessions to people who live in the separatist East. But he told Russian President Vladimir Putin that Crimea would always be Ukrainian. And that's exactly why Liberation headlines that this rapprochement is an illusion. It says, while there are positive signs, Ukraine is suspicious of Russia's attempts for a ceasefire. Kiev and the West pin blame on Moscow for supporting the separatists. And Libé says, no one, since no one's positions have changed, the violence is likely to continue. Well, looking at the uh, French papers here on France Lancat, like thanks a lot. Coming up after the break, uh, of course, we've got more on that uh, ongoing news story. Well, uh, the latest we've heard uh, from Pakistan is that the firing has now stopped at uh, the airport at Karachi. But the Taliban in the last few minutes claiming responsibility for that attack. At least 23 people killed. We'll have the very latest uh, on it right after the break. So stay with us if you can.